it is no secret that we absolutely love Story of the Road. You've heard me talk about it. I have videos about it. So why did we stop? Good question. I don't know about you, but when I hear people talk about a curriculum a lot or an organizational hack or whatever it is, and then they stop using it, and I don't ever hear why, I'm always left wondering what happened. Was their opinion about it before not accurate? Should I not trust what they think? Or did something, something else cause them to stop? So I thought today I would address why it is we stopped using story of the world. So the biggest reason was me. I wanted some variety, which sounds ridiculous. There's four books in it. There's all kinds of activities, lots of books, etc. But we were on our third try or third round through it with the ages of my kids. And I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> it was just at that point where I can't, I can't do it again. I absolutely adore it. It made history come alive for me. My kids all enjoyed it. I love the format. I love the memories we made from it. I love the activities and the book recommendations. But I was, I was tired of it. <laughs> I still maintain that it is one of the best curricula out there. We've used a lot in 12, almost, more well, we're starting thir year 13. We've used a lot. It, it was fantastic. And it worked well for all of my kids, which is very, very rare. There's almost nothing that's, <laughs> that they've all used. So it's nothing against the program at all. I love it. Susan Mize, Bra Susan Mize Bauer is an amazing author. She does a great job with it. So, what else besides the fact that I was bored? Well, um, one thing that came up was that my boys learn well through videos. And so I was finding myself adding more videos to, or adding videos to it. She, she has a lot of great resources, but not videos. So I was finding myself adding different documentaries and YouTube videos and stuff to it, which is great. It worked well for them. They learned well through that way. It worked well for me because it gave me, freed me up a little bit. But then I was like, well, if I'm already doing the work of adding, finding other videos and adding to it, is this the curriculum that we should be following? And then I was finding myself adding to it to become less Eurocentric. Obviously, she does a great job incorporating the story of the entire world, but she's limited into what, I mean, she only has four books. <laughs> like, you can't include everything. And so I was finding myself adding, like, looking specifically for more South American videos and story books, Af you know, ones that out of Africa, different Asian countries that she didn't cover. I didn't really touch much. And so again, I was like, well, <laughs> if I'm looking to add other resources to it, which is great, it gives a more complete picture, but, and then the final nail in the coffin was a TED talk that I was watching. Um, I love TED talks. And I came across one that someone had sent me and it was all about Africa and the fact that when you, when people think of Africa, what do we know about it? Or what are the first things that come to your mind? Well, for me and for a lot of people, what was argued in this video, things like famine and drought, war, slavery. Outside of Egypt, what do you really know about African history? How many African countries can you name? How many African leaders can you name, current or past? If you're like most of us, it's not very many. And so when I heard that, and I was already having these rumblings about, you know, doubts about whether I should continue a story of the world, wanting to be done with it because I was bored, 
thinking about all the videos and other resources I was adding, it occurred to me that maybe I should do a Stories of Africa unit. I'm already putting in the work to find the other resources, and this video, this TED Talk, just kept resonating with me and just kept coming up in my mind and in other news articles, you know, little bits that would all connect it and remind me that I don't know much about Africa. So last year, that led me then to create a Stories of Africa unit for us. And that was our whole study last year. And it was hands down one of the best things I've ever done for our homeschool. I absolutely loved it. The kids enjoyed it. My boys, I should say, my daughter's high school level, so she was doing her own thing. Um, it was interesting. We learned a ton. And, and it opened up, not to be dramatic, but a new world for us because it's not something that we had really known much about. Now, my boys, before that, in addition to those other things about Africa, they could tell you all kinds of things about animals there. And they could talk to you about um, some of the natural features and weather and climate and such. But the history, and the people, finding curriculum <laughs> about Africa, let me tell you folks, it was not easy. And I was dying to have something written by Susan Weiss Bauer. <laughs> and the books that we did find, um, they were more like textbook-ish. We were so, they were fine. They got us the information, but they were nothing like her writing. <laughs> And we said many times how much we wished there had been a story of Africa book that we could have used with it. So, all I'm about to say, that's why we stopped Story of the World. It was nothing about the curriculum, nothing about her, or changing views for me, or anything like that. I was just bored. <laughs> that, or I should say, that's what got the ball rolling. <laughs> I was bored. Three times through it is a lot. It's great. It's fantastic. Now, if you're wondering how we did use Story of the World, go check out the playlist over there. And you can check out my other Story of the World videos. Thanks for watching.